Hi folks, let's machine a high speed steel lathe form tool on the CNC machine. I have always wanted to do this. Can we make a custom tool for a lathe? ironically on a CNC mill. And it's the perfect chance now because we're working on our DIY CNC lathe. And we want this lathe to have a single tool to cut the full profile of our fixture plate plugs. Let's talk about the tooling that we use, how we succeed in terms of the setup, the recipe, the work holding, the tool holding, the cam, and let's make some chips. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. One of the keys to succeeding here is measuring and checking and dialing in tool run out. At first I threw it in a set screw holder. Here's the thing, set screw holders aren't as bad as people think. Yes, they technically push the tool to one side, but it tends to be about 20 millionths or so, or two tenths of a tenth. It's not material relative to the rest of variances in your stack of things that can vary. Nevertheless, when we threw it in here, more run out than I wanted, especially given how light a cut we're gonna take. We'll come back to feeds and speeds here in a second. So we moved it over to an ER collet. And here's the thing, they vary in quality and sometimes even high quality ones can be a little bit surprisingly off right at first but an ER32 is going to let us dial it in. And so what we're able to do here is get this tool to within about two tenths run out. You'll notice we've got a midget toy tense indicator. We really like using the Noga mag base with the fine adjust on the base, given how sensitive these tense indicators are. And we're turning the tool backwards by hand, measuring the run out at the flute. We want to do this for two reasons. One, we want to know what it is because we want to get really good tool life and really good finishes. But we, you also need to check it because if you have something really, really far off, for some reason, a thou or two thou of run out, you'll never know that. Your tool's gonna break very quickly and you won't know why it broke. This is a typical high-speed steel blank for a lathe tool, been around forever. One of the classic machinist things is to go grind one of these on a grinder into a traditional cutting tool. But I love this idea of using our CNC mill to make the shape that I want. Before we did that though, I wanted to take some test cuts nice and easy on the end of this tool to see if our feeds and speeds were going to work. We are using this tool number from Harvey Tool card here to the page on this project where we got all the links to the tools that we use and information that we use. It's a 1 8 inch diameter tool with a 3 8 inch overall flute length with a 3 8 inch length of cut. The key to hard milling is not only the tool geometry, but the coating here. After I bought this tool though, I had a little panic moment because I didn't catch that it was only for steels up to 55 Rockwell. So now everyone sit down because you're not gonna believe this. I called Harvey Tech Support. I did get a calling tree when that first rang, but I hit one button and I know this is mind blowing, a human being picked up and that human being was actually very, very knowledgeable about machining and speeds and feeds. And it was just a godsend. Thank you. It, it means so much uh, as an entrepreneur and a business person when you see companies that have invested in customer support and tech support uh, like this. And it would be unfair for me to not give a mention to Lakeshore Carbide, who we've used for so long. Also great support there. But again, Harvey, thank you guys. I asked the guy, I said, hey, I didn't realize that this is probably north of 60, maybe even 63 Rockwell, high speed steel. He said, no problem. If you want to back down your surface footage by 10 or 15%, uh, go ahead and do that. But he's like, I, we just don't anticipate there being a problem. Call us back if there is. Speeds and feeds. Chip load per tooth is by cutter diameter. We're using the 1 8 inch diameter tool and we're definitely cutting as hard as it gets. So 55 Rockwell. We are profiling, not slotting. Profiling would be similar to the adaptive type strategy. So our chip load per tooth is 1.9 tenths or just shy of two ten thousandths of an inch. That is incredibly low. You've seen us talk about speeds and fees and starting recipes. And one of our cardinal rules on the chip load per tooth is don't go less than the absolute minimum of half a thousandth feed per tooth. We're going one nine. We're going under, well under half of that. Why does that work? I don't know. But I do know that I trust Harvey Tool from a quality standpoint and a reputation standpoint. And Grimsmo has been running their small diameter tools to make crazy things like his 20 thou end mills to machine their Torx pockets for their knives for years uh, and says really good things. So I wish I had a better answer as to why such a low chip load per tooth doesn't rub, but it must have to do with the grind and the coating. So what's our depth of cut? Pretty easy. It's going to just be 0.15 times diameter. So with a 1 8 inch diameter tool, 15% radial depth of cut means 0.01875 and axial depth of cut 
half the tool diameter or 1 16th of an inch. This one we can back off on if we want to take it easy. There won't be much consequence to reducing the axial depth of cut. I would be careful about adjusting the radial depth of cut. Increasing it obviously will may be asking too much of the tool or the gullet, the area between the flutes may not be large enough to handle the larger chip. But also reducing your radial depth of cut can bring you further into the world of chip thinning. Card here to the page where we go through our crash course, intro to feeds and speeds, and talk about what the heck is chip thinning, and it does matter. So we did drop the surface footage down from 60 surface feet to 50 surface feet per minute. Uh, we kept the feed per tooth of 1.9 tenths, and we're keeping the radial depth of cut, which was the 15% of the tool diameter, as well as the maximum roughing step down, aka axial depth of cut. And look at it, it's cutting great. And it's interesting, card here to the other video we did uh, on hard milling, where we're using a much larger tool, but we had great success. I was pretty nervous about this. One eighth inch tools aren't too delicate, uh, but they're also not nearly as strong as a 3 16th inch tool. So we were really happy with how this went. This quick test tells me the tool's going to work. So now we're gonna rotate that vise 90 degrees, and that's going to let us use a sign bar with a set of gauge blocks to tip this part up at the required eight degree angle. If we need an eight degree angle with a sign bar, we like the little machine shop sign bar calculator. Eight degrees, calculate, tells me I need a .696 set of gauge blocks. Then we use the iOS app Gauge Stacker, cost a few bucks, well worth it. Gives us that breakdown really quick of what those gauge blocks are. The fewer the gauge blocks you use, the better off you are. Make sure they're clean, make sure they ring together, and then we like to check them with a set of calipers just to make sure we didn't make one of those really embarrassing errors. Perfect, we got our height, set our sign bar in, along with a small toolmaker's vise, and we've got a pretty good setup pretty quickly. My grandfather's old uh, analog level check, we've got zero on the top of our vise, so if we move this over to the toolmaker's vise, I wanna make sure we've got eight degrees, and we do, awesome. The rest of this is a combination of super awesome and exciting because we're using a CNC machine to hard mill 60 plus Rockwell tool steel into a custom form lathe tool. That's really exciting. But watching this is about as exciting as paint dries here in a minute. It's definitely not fast. I do wonder if you had to do this often, if there are ways to speed it up. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind would be stepping up to a larger diameter tool, significantly stronger, uh, and it's gonna be able to quote unquote hog that material off of there. Then you could come in with a rest machining strategy with a smaller tool to get into the required corner radii that we've got here. But overall, I'm super happy. These are not inexpensive end mills, so I wanted them to last. We did unfortunately break two of them. And surprise, surprise, both were my mistake. The first one I broke, I had the part modeled up incorrectly from a height standpoint, so it took too much depth to cut as it went into that corner. If I hadn't checked the run out, this is a great example of where I would have been concerned about run out. The second error is super frustrating because when I went to reprogram up the remaining tool fix, I only had to machine a few more passes on the bottom, but see this yellow retract and linking safe move plane? Yeah, I didn't have that high enough. I had it linked to the top plane, something like that. And you can see that yellow linky move is just gonna crash right through your part. Nevertheless, still super happy. Before we started this, I really wasn't sure if we were gonna be able to get this done, and we've done it. I like the speeds and feeds, I trust the tool, and I now have the confidence to know that if we had to do this again, we can do it, and I don't even think I'd break a tool. The last thing to do, though, is part this tool off. We need that tool to be relatively short because it's going to sit on top of a machined post right here, and when our part comes out, our form tool will come in and, again, cut that full profile in one pass. And I thought for a few minutes about how do I want to cut this tool. The best thing I could think of was a cutoff wheel on a, on a die grinder or a pneumatic grinder, but I really didn't want to put the heat into the tool blade like that. And I've heard that you can score them and then hit them, but it just, they all seem to lack in elegance. And I thought, well, I noticed on the Harvey Speeds and Feeds, they had slotting recipes. All we have to do is back down the feed rate a very small amount and reduce our depth of cut. 
It only took eight minutes in the machine. I don't have to stress about holding the die grinder and getting that cut without breaking a blade, and it's a much nicer cut, so it really ended with a nice win. We threw the tool in a makeshift tool holder on a manual machine just to see, does it work? Does it cut plastic well? How, what does it look like? What's the finish look like? And it worked great, which is awesome. Next up, back to building the rest of this DIY CNC lathe. We're super excited. So much we've already learned in putting this together. And I think there's an awesome opportunity here for really inexpensive and attainable and achievable automation and dedicated machines and purpose-built things to help us all do what we love doing. Hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you next Wednesday.